17 visits, and she wanted things done right. I will tell you, they told me. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, Cruise Day Trading. Frank, here's another real time job. Uh, recording I'm doing to show the power of tactical training. You can see here in the on the levels uh, and the patterns that were uh, um, charted uh, well before uh, what's happening now. We just start charted actually uh, in the first part of the day. And you can see here how that's developing. I, I called it Coil Spring a few minutes ago in the, in the chat room. Uh, and here we have the first signs of a uh, of the of, of buyers stepping in. So that this move alone is good for about 20% on the SPX calls. You can see the candle developing. I expect it to get to the top of the uh, channel right here. Uh, and you can see this happening. Um, algorithmic high frequency trading markets demand, demand that all traders um, track who is a trading tactical charts to a, to, to, to the, to the uh, very detailed degree, and all these are posted for all your benefits. You gotta mimic these on your screens and make the most out of these markets that we're seeing. Keep on watching, there's gonna be no audio for the next couple of minutes. Congratulations to all of the men and women who helped build it. This is American craftsmanship at its biggest, at its best, at its finest. American workers are the greatest anywhere in the world. This warship and all who serve on it should be a source of shared pride for our nation. We are joined today, better believe it, right? Better believe it. Better believe it. And by the way, we're going to soon have more coming. Not more coming. We are joined today by General Mattis, now Secretary Mattis. Cheers. Who will be charged with overseeing this great rebuilding of our military might. We will give the men and women of America's armed service the resources we need to keep us safe. We will have the finest equipment in the world, planes, ships, and everything else. We are going to have, very soon, the finest equipment in the world. We will give our military the tools you need to prevent war and, if required, to fight war and only do one thing. You know what that is? Win! Win! We're going to start winning again. Admiral John Richardson, Chief of Naval Operations, is with us today as well. Great gentlemen. Admiral, we're going to ensure our Navy has the resources, personnel, training, and equipment, the kind of equipment that you need. So, congratulations, Admiral. A lot more is coming. Let me congratulate Captain Richard McCormick, commanding officer of the Gerald R. Ford. This ship will make an extraordinary addition to the fleet, like no other, like no other. Anywhere in the world, there's nothing like this. It represents the future of naval aviation. I have no greater privilege than to serve as your commander in chief and the commander in chief of the men and women of the United States military. Great people. Great, great people. I salute you and I salute our sailors. I will always support you and your mission. I will never ever let you down. And I also have to recognize Mike Petters, President and CEO of Huntington Ingalls Investors, along with Matt Mulherin, President of Newport News Shipbuilding. They won't let you down either. They're not going to let you down either. To those who serve our nation in Europe, and to those who build the instruments of our defense, 
I thank you on behalf of our nation. <laughs> I agree. I agree. Our cannons are the centerpiece of American military might overseas. We are standing today on four and a half acres of combat power and sovereign U.S. territory, the likes of which there is nothing to compete. There is no competition to this ship. It is a monument to American might that will provide the strength necessary to ensure peace. This ship will carry 4,500 personnel and 70 aircraft and will be a vital component of our defense. This carrier and the new ships in the Ford class will expand the ability of our nation to carry our vital missions on the oceans to project American power in distant lands. Hopefully, it's power we don't have to lose. But if we do, there is big, big trouble. This great aircraft carrier provides essential capabilities to keep us safe from terrorism and take the fight to the enemy for many years in the future. The great Admiral Nimitz, who commanded the U.S. Pacific Fleet through the Second World War, once said, it is the function of the Navy to carry the war to the enemy so that it will not be fought on U.S. soil. And it was under Admiral Nimitz's command 75 years ago this June that the Navy did just that. At the Battle of Midway, you've all known about the Battle of Midway, where the sailors of the U.S. Navy fought with a bravery that will be remembered throughout the ages. Story of bravery throughout the ages. The backbone of the American fleet at Midway was three beautiful aircraft carriers, the Yorktown, the Enterprise, and the Hornet. All three were built with American hands right here at the Newport News shipyard. At Midway, America was greatly outnumbered. By, I mean, a lot. And its fleet badly damaged, but the heroic deeds changed the course of history. Many brave Americans died that day, and through their sacrifice, they turned the tide of the Pacific War. It was a tough tide, it was a big tide, it was a vicious tide, and they turned it. Countless other Americans in that war, some of them parents and grandparents, the people in this room today, came home thanks to their very heroic deeds. The sailors of Midway are part of a long line of American heroes, an unbroken chain of patriots from each generation to the next, who rose to defend our flag and our freedom. That legacy continues today as American warriors protect our people from the threat of terrorism. On Tuesday, in my address to a joint session of Congress, I asked Congress to eliminate the defense sequester and to support my request for a great rebuilding of the United States military and the United States Navy. After years of endless budget cuts that have impaired our defense, I am calling for one of the largest defense spending increases in history. And by eliminating the sequester and the uncertainty it creates, we will make it easier for the Navy to plan for the future and thus to control costs and get the best deals for the taxpayer, which of course is very important. Right? Gotta get a good deal. Here 
I'm not going to pay you, we're not doing our job. The same boat, the less money. The same ship, the less money. The same airplanes, the less money. That's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. It means we're going to get more of them. And we can use them. Our military requires sustained, stable funding to meet the growing needs placed in our defense. Right now, our aging frontline strike and strike fighters, the whole aircraft, many, many aircraft, they're often more likely to be down for maintenance than they are to be up in the sky. Our Navy is now the smallest it's been since, believe it or not, World War I. Don't worry. It will soon be the largest it's been. Don't worry. Think of that. Think of that. In these troubled times, our Navy is the smallest of things since World War I. That's a long time ago. In fact, I just spoke with Navy and industry leaders and have discussed my plans to undertake a major expansion of our entire Navy fleet, including having the 12-carrier Navy we need. We also need more aircraft, modernized capabilities, and greater force level. Additionally, we must vastly improve our cyber capabilities. This great rebuilding effort will create many jobs in Virginia and all across America, and it will also spur new technology and new innovation. America has always been the country that boldly leads the world into the future. And my budget will ensure we do so and continue to do exactly that. American ships will sail the seas. American planes will soar the sky. American workers will build our fleets. And America's military will ensure that even though the darkest nights and throughout, a bright and glowing sun will always shine on our nation and on our people. Our Navy is great. Our Navy is great. Our people are great. Great. Our Republic will meet any challenge defeat any danger, face any threat, and always seek the true and lasting peace. May God bless our America. May God bless our America. May God bless the wonderful Gerald Ford family. And may God continue to bless the United States of America. Thank you very much. President Trump running up his uh, running up his comments to thousands of sailors and shipbuilders who are in the hangar bay to the USS Gerald Ford. Gerald Ford, for a carrier, it is the most technologically advanced warship ever built. For the most expensive, only $13 billion went over budget, no surprise. Expected to be uh, commissioned this summer. First new class of aircraft carrier that we've had designed since 1975, the USS Venus, that you have been referred to. Um, and there are two more in production, by the way, the Pentagon and the Kennedy. And of course, why he's there? He wants to spend more on the nation's defense. And he highlights he wants to have even more ships. He wants to get up to a number of ships, 350 currently in the United States, only his. Yeah, rebuilding is a key theme with the president, but of course, uh, it's all about cost, right? He said uh, more ships at a lower price, and he emphasized that, that you know, of course, that's his, uh, that was his modus operandi when it came to Boeing and Lockheed Martin. Apparently, he plans to continue that with the rebuilding of the uh, aircraft carriers in the U.S. Navy. We should note that Huntington Ingle, it is a publicly traded company, HII, the ticker symbol there, it's up 67% over the past 12 months. In Jabber, stand by here to send in. Uh, once again, we've been hearing all this week about how the budget priorities of this administration aim and ought to be about spending more on defense, and he reiterated that today. Yeah, that's right, Michelle.
ago. This is really an emotional pick to back up some of the numbers that the White House put out last uh, earlier in the week, talking about $54 billion in additional spending on the United States military from the president. They're going to match that, they say, with $54 billion, billion dollars in cuts in non-defense discretionary spending. So this is the president making the case of what they're going to spend that money on. Aircraft carriers like the Gerald of Ford, uh, all sorts of other equipment, I use the term uh, describing the military as being sort of hollowed out in recent years, saying we need to get back to a good, robust United States military. Uh, this is the big move that the White House wanted today. Uh, this is absolutely uh, uh, the, the key point that the White House wanted to put out today. It's been a little bit distracted from the White House's perspective by this news about Jeff Sessions, but uh, they'll be very pleased with the images they're seeing from this event today. You heard the biggest cheer happen when he said, and we're going to have more of them. And the room exploded, and we're so happy to hear that. That's right. Thanks, Evan. Well, remember, Newport News has been in the center of American shipbuilding for about a century or more, so this is very, very important economically for that community as well. Yeah, good point. Thanks, Maven. President Trump, as we yeah. mentioned, speaking about rebuilding the military, does that mean we should run out and buy defense stocks to watch trading nations to invest? This car is traveling over 200 miles per hour to win every race of the Niners, both on the track and thousands of miles away. With the help of AT&T, Red Bull Racing can share critical information about every inch of the car to virtually any place. Giving them the agility to have speed and precision, because no one knows it like at and You know what no one wants? No one wants to run out of money in the middle of a time. The fact is, running out of money when you're old is brutal. If you can plan your way through that carefully, and if you don't know how to do that, which most people don't, you need some kind of help with that planning. Fisher Investments can help you with the ideas and the implementation for who you are now, what you need, and what you need in the future. We provide knowledge, support, and are committed to doing what's right for you. Call now for your free retirement gift from Forbes columnist and legendary money manager, Ken Fisher. You'll receive When to Retire, a quick and easy planning guide, and 99 retirement tips from Ken Fisher. Call now, 1-800-617-4466. You can achieve your investment goals, and Fisher Investments can help you get there. Call now for your free retirement gift, 1-800-617-4466. So as this uh, real-time video has been recorded, I'm basically proceeding to show different time frames and how to structure charts so you all can basically do this on your own. And with my help and the hard work of identifying inflection points and all that uh, levels, uh, you can see it's not easy, but it's not rocket science either. You just have to be patient and see how the algos react to those levels that I'm showing. Because my levels are pretty much uh, in, in, in symmetry uh, and uh, uh, in tandem with um, what these algo HFT programs are. And that's the reason why you're into real estate trading. And that's the reason why you should tell all your buddies to come join us. You can see what's going on here in the 15 minutes. And uh, we're starting to see a nice move. We're going to switch out to, uh, we're going to switch out to the one hour and you will be seeing a, uh, you will be seeing the candle expanding. Okay, it's obviously much easier to see on the 15-minute charts where if we zoom in and see uh, what's going on. All right, sign up for the advanced coaching sessions. Uh, a lot more to be learned, and I definitely take the time and energy to go ahead and uh, explain to you all how this, uh, you know, how to manage these uh, very robotic markets. And, and, and profit. Thank you for listening and keep watching the video. We have uh, roughly about 60 seconds left here, so I'm going to, uh, you know, it's going to cut off at this point. About 20 seconds, I believe. Looking down here. So those calls have appreciated about 30% so far. About 25 percent. That's your cell zone right there. That's why there's a red arrow, top of the channel. 